Hallelujah. Grace to the hearers today. God is amazing. So thankful that you are with us today. I'd like to open with prayer of like kind. My name is Debbie Arce, co-senior pastor at Call of Zion Church in Chula Vista. Excited about the word of God today. Thankful, thankful, Father God, for salvation through Christ Jesus. Thankful for the Holy Spirit who empowers us, who engages us, who woos us to the Word and to fellowship in the Spirit. Oh, God, thank you. Lord, we can do nothing aside from you. And today we promise, God, to give you glory through our story And we promise, Father God, that your name will be high and exalted, Father God, for we can do nothing apart from you. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. Well, welcome to Of Like Kind. little background on how does this podcast relate to an Of Like Kind exchange. Having that conversation sometimes with your kids if you have kids or people around you, your job, your friends, co-workers, people in the church that are experts, you always have something to gain. And I don't take lightly the conversations that I have with my children, who are all grown, and even my grandchildren. I love having conversations with them from the oldest to the very youngest, even though the youngest may not understand my conversations, I just can't wait to talk to them. I don't mean to be that talky-talky person, but today I had that conversation at one time with my son who explained to me through real estate, and it went over my head basically, but I kind of listened because I at that point was listening to the Holy Spirit about having me do a podcast, a series of podcasts. And my son was trying to explain to me what it meant when you exchange one property of like value with another property in real estate. And he called it an of like kind exchange or an uh, internal revenue calls it a 1031. And so what it was is You can exchange two similar properties, supposedly if you do it right, and it defers your tax penalties. Some cases, it even cancels the tax penalties. And I thought, wow, that's kind of interesting, of like kind. So I took that home with me, and I thought about it, and my genius son, Abraham, who put together this whole podcast series, said, Mom, what are you going to do? What's going to be the title of your podcast? And I just said, of like kind. And he said, that's good. So he looked it up. He said, yeah, let's do that. So thankfully to him, to both of my sons, and of course to God and the Holy Spirit, this is why we are entitling these series uh, of like kind. And so today the focus is challenged to yield. I don't know if you've ever been in traffic, but sometimes when people in front of you don't know how to drive on the freeway, they sort of want to stop instead of just kind of easing their way in. And they, they're so challenged to yield that they just cause a major backup of traffic. Well, in life sometimes, As we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are challenged to yield. And sometimes it's very difficult to do that. But God always makes a way for us. He always shows us. His grace is sufficient for us. He's always kind and loving. And so our focus in Scripture today along these lines is found in 2 Corinthians 2.14, the ESV. God always makes his grace visible in Christ, who includes us as partners of his endless triumph 
through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere we go. Woo! That is amazing what God can do in our in our lives as we have an enter into an of like kind exchange. When I think about this spreading the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere we go, the icon or artist's rendition of the golden cross painted by Sister Lorena Ramirez illustrates the outcome of accepting the challenge to yield. As Jesus Christ took on the entire sinful condition of humanity by yielding to our cross, the outcome was the glory for the Father. In his yielded state, he identified his challenge in John 17, 1 through 5, the ESV. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. The golden cross. Yielded and is a word where our lives seem to be in a situation that's like an oxymoron, a yielded life. As normally, these two words are not paired together. I mean, you usually think abundant life and amazing life and resurrected life, but rarely do we see a yielded life. But as they are coupled, and you put those two terms together, yielded life, together they form an explicit definition. A yielded life like that of Christ, in this sense, represents the of like kind exchanged. As Christ yielded what he had in glory previous to coming to earth in the form of a mortal man, being that he is and always was and always will be God, he still entered into that of like kind exchange. He also offers to us as believers that surrendering, that yielding of our old self for a new life through belief in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. This is exemplified in my own story in a, in a small way, and it, it represents a challenge. Challenge to yield in my life was perhaps one of the most difficult times that I, of learning to be led by the Holy Spirit. So also in the believer's life, yielding to the challenge of the Holy Spirit in us is, is a learning process. The of like kind exchange that challenge poses can be intense. Well, it is intense. It's not just can be. It is. Our blessed Lord hit the nail on the head when he described the intensity of human challenge in giving up our will to the rule of the Holy Spirit in Matthew 26, 40, through 43. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. As an advanced placement high school teacher for over four decades, there were numerous challenges um, for me. And there were challenges that forbade discrimination against student-initiated religious content 
with no government sponsorship. I always understood that when I took my oath in licensure as a teacher, that although I was a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, studied the Word of God more than I studied my advanced placement curriculum, I knew that I had to be extremely careful because I taught literature, and the literature that I taught was in Spanish. And a lot of the literature that we studied was written by priests. And so many times when we were studying, my students would have deep questions, questions of introspection. Teacher, do you think that's true? Teacher, what do you think about that? Teacher, teacher, teacher. And it it really grieved my heart that they had no understanding. With that in mind, a few of my students came to me and asked, do you think we could hold a Bible study in your classroom at lunch? And, of course, I knew the law. Um, The law said that students had the right to religious instruction as long as it had no government employee instructing it that it was completely and independently student-led. So understanding that, um, I, I understood that the, there was an amendment that uh, we could always back, be backed on whenever the question arose, like, can we have a Bible study? And so I went to the director of our ASB and asked, can the students hold a Bible study in my classroom at lunchtime? And the ASB director, the dean of student activities, said, well, of course, it's according to the law. The amendment says that it's clear that they can do so. And so I proceeded to offer that opportunity to my students with the blessing, obviously, of the student government and school governance With that understood, I was called into the office by my principal. And my principal said, close the door. He was a burly uh, ex-coach, red-faced, very tall, uh, very domineering as a leader in the school, whom I respected deeply. But he turned to me and he simply said this, In my school, there will be no God, there will be no Bible, there will be no prayer. Is it understood, Mrs. Arce? And I looked at him. He was quite loud. It came across a little intimidating. And I said, yes, sir, I understand what you're saying. So I said, is that all that you have to say to me and I politely exited the office I went to prayer and I went back to that constitutional amendment that guaranteed the rights to my students to hold that Bible study and I summoned the Holy Spirit and asked how am I to yield to this challenge when it specifically is against the Constitution and its amendments? My students have the right to assemble. They have the right to study the Bible. As long as I am not instructing it and I'm not participating in it, I am just there as a supervisor to make sure that everything is safe and secure. And the Holy Spirit said, You have yielded well to challenge. Now you need to yield to my challenge. So with that being said, I respectfully requested a meeting with the principal and brought out that amendment. To his chagrin, the Bible study in question was covered. I read to him the amendment I told him that I believed that my students were being unfairly discriminated against because 
he was welcome to come to the Bible study to make sure that all I was doing was being a janitor, making sure the environment was safe, secure, and clean for the students to assemble. Well, the principal was not very happy with that, but I was very respectful. I did not bang my hand on the table or get burly in my demeanor or try and superimpose my will over his. I simply, humbly requested that he would consider the amendment and that he would allow the Bible study to continue. So the Bible study continued, and I served quietly as the janitor. Several months later, after the Bible study was in gear and everything was going on and I was being a very good janitor, I was summoned by that same principal, about six feet five tall, maybe over 300 pounds, and I in my five foot five demeanor, 140 pounds, entered into his office and he said, shut the door behind you, please, Mrs. Arcee. So... This burly, authoritative principal seemed to struggle over the next words that came out of his mouth, and then he uttered his request. Would I pray for his wife, whose car had just been hit by a semi-truck on the freeway? I bowed my head right then and there and boldly proclaimed the power of God to intervene in Mrs. Principal's life. With that, I said amen, and I exited the office. The principal had turned his chair around towards the window, obviously disclosing his face from me. Days later, my principal stopped by my classroom to call me outside thanking me quietly for praying as his wife was okay and completely sur survived miraculously. As we yield to the Holy Spirit in life's countless challenges, we will see elements of our story for God's glory. A Bible example that underscores my story, and has always helped me through yielding to challenges. You know, you have yields to challenges in the world. You have yields to challenges in the Spirit. Holy Spirit will tell you to do some things that you're not comfortable with, but as you yield to Him, He will direct your steps. He will use elements of your story for God's glory he will help you enter into that of like kind exchange. Learning to yield as a Christian in an ungodly society calls for the master's expertise. He knows just what to do. He never makes a mistake. It was Jesus who taught us to enter into an of like exchange when he said in Matthew eleven twenty nine. And 30, the ESV, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and my burden is light. As he faced the challenge of yielding to a sinner's death on the cross of Calvary, he too modeled an of like kind exchange. Matthew 26, 40 through 43 ESV reads like this. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time. He went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. 
And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. What a prime example of a spiritual 1031. If we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross in our place, redeeming us from the penalty of sin, we are saved. Depending on belief that he resurrected from the grave illustrates the exchange between life eternal in heaven or in hell. What a revelation of how our story can bring God's glory. The Golden Cross. We all know the song, The Old Rugged Cross on a Hill Far Away, stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. How I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. I will cling to that old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross in exchange, obviously, for my cross will be a crown. The golden cross brings out the gold that Christ would love to see in our lives through an of like kind exchange, reflective of who he is. Each of us believe in the old rugged cross if we're Christians. But each of us have our own golden cross to carry. Yet, as God's word describes the spiritual 1031 of our own cross, this is where he extends to us his grace to yield. As it is written in 2 Corinthians 2.14, God always makes his grace visible in Christ who includes us as partners in his endless triumph. In his yielded state, Jesus Christ identified his challenge in John 17, 1 through 5 ESV. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. As we apply this scripture to our life, may we say along with Christ, I want to glorify you. I want to glorify you, God, picking up my cross every day and allowing the life of Christ to live through me. I believe in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I know, Jesus, that you were glorified here on the earth because you accomplished the work that God the Father gave you to do. Now I'm asking you to accomplish the work that God has given me to do. Father, I'm asking that you glorify me in your presence with the glory that only you can give as I pick up that golden cross. God, I yield to the challenges today that are facing my life because, God, I want to have that of like kind exchange where my story brings you glory. As we do that, the Bible gives us countless promises, but the outcome of that exchange to carry out a yielded life to challenge is seen in 2 Corinthians 2, 15 to 16, the Passion Translation. We have become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God, a perfume of life to those being saved, and the odor of death to those who are perishing. 
the unbelievers smell a deadly stench that leads to death. But believers smell the life-giving aroma that leads to abundant life. And who of us can rise to this challenge? Thank God that no matter the intensity of our challenge, the Holy Spirit empowers us, all of us, as we are called to overcome through an of like kind exchange. And I challenge you today through this promise that you would pick up your golden cross, that you would die to yourself, that you would live unto Christ. Maybe you or someone that you know who like my story or the story of our Lord in the most intense trials are challenged with the ex- Change between a life yielded to Christ Jesus as Lord and a life that leads to death and destruction. Maybe you have seen that an of like kind exchange brings to you a heaviness, a heaviness of heart, much like that of the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane as they slept and they were awakened by the Lord on it two occasions, can't you at least pray with me for an hour? And Jesus said to them, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. As a believer, we need to take that yoke that Jesus said was light upon us in exchange for the heaviness of our hearts. We need to see the gold that comes forth from our cross, the elements of our story that can bring God glory. I pray today that you enter into that of like kind exchange that renders and surrenders and yields to challenge, challenges from God, that your life yielded to Jesus Christ as Lord transforms your story into God's glory. Perhaps today's teaching or exhortation, or story has brought heat or light to your life. Heat in that perhaps you are saying, wow, I never looked at my cross as a golden cross. I never saw it as an opportunity to glorify God. I always saw it as a painful death to me. But rather than a death to me, it is a life unto Christ. It is when he comes and takes over and he removes this sinful lifestyle and exchanges it with restitution, redemption, salvation. For that, we are ever grateful to God. And that brings that heat into our spirit, lighting a fire for us to pick up our cross and to follow after Christ. It could be that this small exhortation brought light into your heart where you said, I'm kind of understanding it from a different perspective now. I don't see it as drudgery or pain or I see it as a blessing. I see it as an endless triumph that Christ lives through me. I see it as an opportunity to yield to the challenge that the Holy Spirit brings to me. I see it where God's grace becomes visible in me, that we become partners to Christ's endless triumph, that the fragrance of the knowledge of God goes everywhere that we go. If that be you today, I'd like to pray for you. Father God, we come to you this day in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the golden cross. Thank you for the endless fragrance and aroma that you allow, Father, to flow through our lives as we surrender to you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. Jesus, we believe that you took up our cross. You died in our place to pay for the penalty of our sins. And then you resurrected on the third day to give us life, to live through us, to give us an of like kind exchange where the penalty for our sins has been deferred eternally. We thank you today, O God, that you have come into our lives with grace and mercy. And through your Holy Spirit and the word of God, you teach us so tenderly. 
Your yoke is so light, O God, that we would learn of you, Father God, to yield to these challenges that are brought to our lives. And we thank you and promise to give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you. Series number 13. God bless you.